We're joined now by the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani. It is his first interview since Qatar helped broker this hostage deal between Hamas and Israel. Qatar has also facilitated getting Americans stuck in Gaza out of the region. Good morning to you, sir. Well, thank you very much for having me, Margaret. Uh, Sheikh, the, the White House told us that at least one American is expected to be released by Hamas today. You've seen the list of hostages. Will we see four-year-old Abigail Idan released today? And are you confident this exchange will happen? Well, uh, so far, things are moving in the right direction. We've been working very closely with the U.S. government, with the White House, of course. And uh, we are hoping that uh, we will see the release happening shortly. And uh, within the list, they include uh, Abigail, the young girl, four years old. Will we see more Americans released soon? Well, we are hopeful, actually. Uh, there are uh, still uh, some names uh, which are supposed to be uh, on the first group. Until now, we didn't get the confirmation yet. But, uh, you know, we are working on a daily basis and uh, making sure that uh, every day we have the list of the next day. So uh, we are hopeful that to have uh, to have a confirmation of, you know, a proof of life for them and hopefully uh, uh, the release at, at the end of the agreement. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, things are happening on a daily basis and uh, we are focused on today's operation and hopefully that it will happen very shortly from now. Well, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I understand a Qatari delegation visited Israel yesterday and Gaza today. Do you expect that this four-day truce will be extended? And if so, for how long? Well, well actually, we are, we are hopeful. According to uh, uh, the agreement that uh, being agreed upon uh, in the last few days for this uh, four days uh, pause, uh, the agreement has a provision that uh, if Hamas are, will be able to prove, uh, to locate uh, and secure some of the hostages that are within uh, the criteria of the first group, which is women and children, then it will be uh, extended, depends on, on the number that they will have. Uh, this is something we cannot confirm yet until we get uh, to the fourth day. Uh, then uh, Hamas should uh, present the list if they are available with them. Uh, our delegation who have uh, reached to Israel and uh, uh, to Gaza, they are totally two separate delegation. Uh, Gaza delegation is focused on ensuring that humanitarian aid are sufficient that they are going uh, the humanitarian aid to, that's going in Gaza and it's a pure humanitarian mission. Our delegation uh, who are in Israel, they are uh, uh, the mirror operation room to ours uh, in Doha that uh, monitor the operation of the releases and ensuring that everything and any concern that addressed as early as possible. Well, during these pauses in military operations, um, has Hamas been able to gather more hostages? Do you have any indication that there will be more freed beyond these 50 women and children and civilians? Well, until now, we have, we have no confirmation. But, uh, you know, Margaret, it's, it's a very uh, complicated structure that uh, we've been dealing with. So... Uh, our dealing is only with the political office uh, uh, in Doha and the representatives in that office, whom they are communicating with uh, uh, Hamas uh, in Gaza, and they are get, bringing the information from them. And normally, what we have seen throughout these negotiations, uh, the information only provided at the time uh, uh, of any agreement uh, or when it's happened, but uh, they never indicate something uh, earlier. And this is a pattern that they've been using uh, as part of their methods for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You're saying the political leaders located in Doha um, sometimes have a delay in communicating with the military commanders in Gaza. Uh, do you know where Yahya Sinwar, the Hamas commander believed to have planned these attacks? is right now? Well, uh, I don't think that this information uh, is available with anyone except, you know, the people who are close to him. And this is an information, really, that 
doesn't uh, uh, relate much to uh, what we are doing right now and uh, uh, on the ongoing negotiations. Our communication uh, throughout the years that we had with Hamas has been uh, very exclusive to uh, the political wing and uh, the political representatives in, in the office here in Doha, and that's it. And uh, we don't deal directly with uh, or ha never have any dealing with the military wing. Mm -hmm. Well, Qatar is home to the uh, very large U.S. military base. Qatar is a, a major non-NATO U.S. ally. But in this country, a number of Republican lawmakers in particular um, have publicly called for your country to hand over those Hamas political leaders. What is the future? Will they remain in Qatar? Margaret, our relation with the U.S. is, is a very solid relationship and alliance that uh, been established throughout the decades. Uh, we've been working together very closely in ensuring peace and stability in the region. And in several occasions, Qatar has been always stepping up to this partnership. And uh, uh, if you recall, Afghanistan and currently right now, we've been working very closely with the White House, with the CIA and State Department to ensure that uh, this deal is happening. Uh, the President of the United States is in constant contact with His Highness the Emir, and I've been in constant co communication with our colleagues in the White House, CIA, and State Department as well. Uh, uh, there is a relation that's based on trust, based on mutual interest of, of both countries. This office, when it's established, it's established in coordination uh, with the U.S. to establish the communication with Hamas, and it's been always useful not only for the U.S., but for the U.S., Israel, and for the stability uh, of the region. And uh, uh, as long as this is something useful, and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, right now we are in the middle of the negotiation, we will always keep the communication open with everyone. We did that previously with Taliban. Some of uh, uh, the politicians in the U.S., they didn't, uh, probably they didn't like it or they disagreed with us. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we've been dealing with this matter very professionally and trying to uh, get the benefit of, of this communication. You cannot end the conflict by speaking to your friend. Uh, if there is a conflict, you need a friend to speak to your adversary or to your opponents. And I believe Qatar represents the perfect friend of the United States to speak to those adversaries and multiple parties. Do you see an opportunity in this short truce to have some kind of diplomatic agreement to end the conflict? And will Qatar play a role in the future of Gaza? You've had a relationship with Gaza under Hamas's rule. Will the future of Gaza involve your country? Well, our relationship, Margaret, uh, is with the Palestinian people, with the Palestinian cause. Our support for the Palestinian people has been ongoing for decades, and this is what Qatar stood for. Whoever is governing the Palestinians, it's their choice. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, our focus right now is how to end this war, how to ensure that this is not repeated. And the only way to ensure that this is not repeated is to resolve it peacefully, to have a political solution and provide the Palestinian people with a political horizon for, for a state. And then uh, the day after and who will govern Gaza, Gaza and the West Bank should be one unit, one country under one leadership that will be chosen by the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. And Qatar will play a role, I understand you saying. Um, before I let you go, you've talked... Well, uh, for, for, the, for the support of the Palestinian people, definitely we will continue that. Understood. Before I let you go, as you mentioned, Qatar has undertaken a lot of diplomatic initiatives. One of them recently has been to help bring Ukrainian children who were taken to Russia back to their families in Ukraine. You've brought four children home so far. Is there hope to bring home more Ukrainian children soon? And what is the goal here? Are you trying to broker a breakthrough with Russia? Well, Qatar has been uh, mediating in different conflicts that not only exclusive to the region, but uh, even beyond that. And uh, this is something that's been in, in, in the foundation of, of the country foreign policy. And it's, it's a core 
uh, element that we are focusing on. Uh, and this, we see that this is a contribution uh, of such a small country to uh, international peace and security. Uh, we carried out this role uh, based on the request uh, uh, at the beginning from the Ukrainian in our constant exchange and, and communication with them, how we are able to help. And we used the channels of communication and the relationship that we have with Russia to secure those four kids. And this, uh, these efforts are, has been ongoing and still continuing. And we are hoping also for another group to come back to their families before the holidays, hopefully. Another group, how many children? Well, until now, the numbers are, are not clear yet. So uh, I won't disclose it until we have, you know, this solidified and finalized. All right. Uh, Prime Minister, I appreciate your time in the middle of this intense diplomacy. We will be watching and hoping for progress. Thank you very much, Margaret, for having me.